so far we've looked at V2000, VHS, Betamax, and now we have Micro Video CVC by Technicolor. Let's crack on. Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Beats Bite video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Technicolor Micro Video uh, CVC format model 212E video cassette recorder. Um, now, these date from um, about 1980. Uh, they were launched uh, using the NTSC format in 1980, but um, because of the technical difficulties that they had uh, converting the, the um, electronics to um, PAL and subsequently CCAM, I guess, um, the re release was actually delayed quite a bit in uh, the UK. So um, the uh, format itself um, is developed by Technicolor, and the um, the actual deck itself is a Funai based um, deck uh, built under license. And uh, but you wouldn't know that it doesn't give any clues outwardly anyway uh, that it is a Funai deck. So uh, the cassette, this is a cassette. Uh, it is ever so slightly bigger than an audio cassette and sort of the, the depth is about the same and uh, yeah they typically came in either 30 minutes or 60 minutes 30 minute was what was supplied with it when you bought one of these you you got a, a 30 minute cassette in with the bundle um so i've got a 30 minute case <laughs> with a 60 minute, minute um, tape so that's really cool uh, i've only got one so uh, basically what i'm going to do is we're going to take this apart first before i even try and do anything with it even before i, I power it on uh, i am lucky as far as i have the original user manual which is quite interesting because it's sort of um, proper typewriter typeface which is really quite cool um, it's sort of quite almost homemade uh, the way that's put together and I have a service manual which is absolutely brilliant um, so the deck itself uh, if I just press eject and you can see in there the head drum and uh, it's all mechanical keys it's fairly simple uh, but of course it is 1980 so it's it's really scaled down as much as possible to make it as portable as possible um, I think the primary objective with this was to use it with a camera and indeed I think the camera that um, uh, Technicolor supplied or you get from Technicolor was actually a Hitachi camera so and that plugged in here and um, I've got just the power supply. There is actually a tuner unit as well. Tuner, uh, I think it had a timer as well, but we'll have a look at that. Um, and um, I don't actually have that here. So, all we've got on the power supply is video out and audio out. Um, we've got RF out as well, but uh, yeah, it's just literally... Um, Going to be playback only i think there is something on this cassette as well um but you can input using the camera input uh, socket now i've actually managed to uh, acquire albeit a chassis mount version a um plug so we can actually input some video into that in the fullness of time and so battery goes in there uh, it's a big old battery. I believe this battery is, well, judging by the, the leak marks on the card there, this battery's had it, but actually fairly easy to um, rebuild. I think they're um, half C um, cells, so 
that would be possible to be rebuilt and I may well do that as well um, depending on how we get on so uh, yeah it's going to be a fun one I do have an article as well um, this machine was actually um, donated to the channel by Steve thank you very much Steve I did get around to it eventually I know you said it would be the first machine I'd look at but <laughs> it's been about six weeks now more than that um, before I've got round to looking at it and he very kindly um, gave me a copy of this um, article back from the day so like I say we'll dip into this as we're looking at this to put out some uh, interesting facts uh, about this deck so with that let's crack on and in case you're wondering we do have some Philips VCR machines to look at as well we've got N1502 and a 1700 as well so subscribe and keep an eye out for that so like I say, we're going to take it apart first, just check it out before I put a cassette in or even power it on. Um, the power supply, um, basically IEC, cold kettle lead um, for the power. It's multi-voltage, um, I'm assuming probably 100, 110 and 240 volts fused. Um, and um, the DIN, uh, connected for the, the machine itself. Uh, there's a 12 volt positive, 12 volt negative, and ground, of course. I might just be able to make out the pin outs there. And um, the power supply actually looks very, very simple. Uh, you've got to the RF out adjustment there. And uh, yeah, this is the mains transformer. And some regulation, I think. It's a fairly beefy heatsink there. But uh, no doubt we'll take the top off that as well. So, yeah, uh, getting into this, I mean, you see just how slim and portable it is. Very light. Uh, this, this is. Um, so, camera, put the power in. Um, got ability to dub. Got a still and then tracking. It's got one of these tracking controls like the early um, Ferguson um, GVC uh, VHS machines where it's sort of lock and then you, you click it to adjust the tracking. So it's always quite fun. So uh, underneath, made in Japan. And uh, it doesn't look too bad to take apart, so uh, yeah, let's do that next. So, uh, quite unique screws in the bottom of this. So let's get those out. I wonder if they're all going to be the same length. Yep, it's all the same length. Super. Wow. <laughs> uh, that looks really fun. Okay, so we've got several of these um, nuts, I suppose you'd describe them as, um, with a flat blade top to them. next thing is is to take the top off so it looks like there's two screws here which are short this just unclips it's very easy to get that out and then two they have little washers on. And they'd have to try and protect everything. I wonder if that's it. That looks to be it. Um, yeah, of course we've got some 
can't see. There's a connector that goes to the top electronics. A little adjustment there for that meter. How that looks. And plugs in here. And there we have it. Oh, wow. It's very interesting. Not quite what I was expecting. So let's have a look at the deck. So we've got the heads. Um, ah, there we go. I was expecting the outer drum. I, I was expecting it to be more like VHS, but it's not. It's sort of almost more like beta, um, I suppose. That's moving. It's really amazing. Changing the heads must be quite fun. Um, how would you do that? Oh, there's two, two Allen screws there. So I guess you want to do that one. And then, oh, and another one, another couple here. So top two, and this upper drum would come off. Um, I assume, I assume that's where you do it. We'll have a look at the manual. <laughs> um, so yes, so that's that. So the next thing is how on earth you separate the deck. Ah, I can see. Okay, so I actually had to go back and um, sort of pour my way through the uh, service manual because um, it seems I have to do I have to remove this panel to finally get the deck out. And uh, another thing that's interesting is we have a date, 13th of October, 81. So, I don't have to, I thought I might have to take that off. Um, yeah, so it said about taking off that. And then, do I, what do I have to do now? So does that actually give me enough now to remove, whoops, do that. Right, so that seems to be doing the trick now. I'm move this round on its base. So I think this should pretty much. Oh, Mr. Connector. Mr. Connector. There we go. <laughs> and, um,. We do also have the head can here. Um, there's an earth or ground. Uh, rather than undo the ground, I'm just going to take the top off this, which somebody else has already done before because that's the wrong side. Interesting, isn't it, when you work on stuff? You're just, you're just sort of following in somebody else's uh, footsteps. So there it is. The deck is off. I'm still not altogether sure what... Releasing all of that. Oh, I see. Ah, right. Yeah, so you're undoing these screws. That's quite cool. And a bit interesting. So there's the deck. We can now have a good look at the actual board. And it is amazing because, I mean, this is sort of 1980-ish, 81. And it's just a single PCB. Um, is that remarkable? I suppose it is. Uh, so we've got Hitachi, quite a lot of Hitachi chips here. It's, it looks like pretty much a Hitachi chip set. It's a Mitsubishi, Hitachi. don't know what that is. That looks like a custom ROM of some description. Uh, Hitachi, Hitachi, Hitachi. 
Motorola and fairly bog standard caps. Looks really tidy. Um, got some fun switching going on here. So um, this is interesting. There are screws going into the end of the um, these, and it's actually these bits that are actuating the logic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's very basic, but of course they're trying to save space. And uh, <laughs> in 1980, that's the way you did it. Um, let the mechanism take the strain. So you can see there, Fanoi. So yeah, really cool. Really cool. Hitachi. So a lot of reliance on Hitachi here. Um, like I say, the, the camera was basically a, a, a rebranded Hitachi camera. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So, a little bit of rust. A little bit of rust. Um, so, uh, well, there are belts, but the belts look fine. Fair play. Obviously, it is premium rubber. Um, I'm not convinced this belt is uh, it's still pretty springy. So it looks like this motor here uh, pretty much does everything. Uh, now, this is looking like we're missing a, a, a belt. Yes, I can actually see what's going on there. Um, oh. Yes, you can see the problem. So, uh, how can I show you? So, you can see here the remnants of a belt. And there should be a belt that goes on that bottom bit there and somehow makes its way to here. And you can see there's remnants of belt on there. I'm surprised there's no remnants of belt on the actual PCB but uh, yeah and you can see this belt here has actually taken taken the brunt <laughs> if you like of that belt just going to go so um I almost don't want to use the manual. Um, because it's more fun just to wing it, isn't it? But on the other hand, I do want to make sure that this machine has the very best possible. Um, so I think if I remove that circlip, then all of this assembly will come off and then we should be good uh this is all loading as it stands um i'm slightly concerned i don't think there's any timing i'm slightly concerned that there's sort of stiffness in this that could be, let's turn the deck over. Yeah, so that's going through to the loading ring. Yeah, so you can see, well, I don't know what you can see, but there is slight movement of the loading ring there. So that's fine um, because it probably is fine. <laughs> so, 
Um, what are we looking at with the control? Um, so this at the moment that's engaged, I think. No, it's not engaged. So this, yeah. So this part of the mechanism, when you put a cassette in, um, let me think this through. When you put a cassette in, this is then um, moved towards the motor uh, by this bit of metal here moving out the way. And that will lace up the tape. Um, now I'm saying when you put the tape in, that's, that's assuming it's a direct um, lace at uh, tape in, which it probably isn't. It's going to be more like VHS. So it's when you press play, can we press play? We'll just play. So that's play. Yeah, see it move? Uh, move not in the direction I expected. Oh, okay. Now I'm getting that all wrong. So it's actually this that moves. When you press play, this moves and laces the, the tape around the head. And the head, not the head, that's the capstan, of course it is. <laughs> around the heads. So do that again. So that is now in lace mode. Um, I'm going to do that too much because I don't break anything. Um, it, it looks all pretty solid, um, maybe a bit utility, but that's good. For something that's this old. Uh, this is interesting as well, that pause. Look how that's bent. So that is actually, actually bent right up so it, I'm sure it can't have been like that from the factory. That seems a bit crazy. But uh, yeah, very interesting. So that would be, Uh, rewind, fast forward, that, that's record, so that, that's rewind, fast forward, eject, play, and then record, which I won't do because obviously there's no cassette in there, so rewind, has a switch on it. Now that's quite cool. Interesting. Um, now, I'm also spotting, oh, okay. I'm gonna need a manual for this, I'm talking about the manual. Um, the, there's also a belt there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, let's consult the manual. So looking at the manual, we've got some fun. Um, see here, one belt. It uh, doesn't really give you much of a clue where it goes. Um, but I assume it's probably that belt. Um, then we've got a belt here. Uh, which I have actually no idea where that goes. I think I need just one belt. Maybe. It's difficult because I've got a belt that needs to be on here. I also have a belt that needs to be under there. Uh, 
I've got this here, which is just, I mean, this just uh, an intermediate pulley here. This this is driven off the um, lacing ring, so that's driving this, which is driving an idler, which is which you probably can't see on the top of the deck. Let's have a look at that if we can. Uh, can't really see it. There's an idler in there somewhere. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. But, mm. yeah, the tape counter is broken. Uh, I didn't break that, <laughs> I promise. Uh, it's just sort of resting in there, so that has to be glued back. But that's that's the least of my worries at the moment. Uh, so if we look at the next page, if we can get the page over. So, motor. Um, so you can see here the capstan arrangement, and that goes on to there, which doesn't make much sense actually when you look at it, um, but it does because that's what it's doing. Um, but then there's this belt here which I do wonder if the belt, the, the, the way the belt is shown is not actually where it goes. I mean, it gives no clue. It gives no clue where the belt goes. Um, heads, head drum. I mean, just looking at this, this is very much, it's almost like a, an R&D manual. It's not really a proper service manual. Um, I mean, it does tell you how to take stuff apart, which is great. And it gives great detail on how to um, work on the electronics. But it doesn't show how the belt's supposed to go. And be quite honest it's going to be pretty difficult to work it out well i say pretty difficult it's going to be time time intensive to work out how the belts are supposed to all line up um yeah so i think what that's doing is this will pull the tape back into the shell um when you press eject or when you press stop, sorry, it's like a VHS. So when you press stop, this, as it unlaces, it will pull the, the, the tape back into the cassette. So I think that's fine, but it's just what's going on here because this is just a single pulley. There's nothing else. It's not like there's a belt going from here to here and nothing else, and, and then another pulley and then over. It's just doing nothing else but that. So, that must be intermediate to going on to maybe here. And thankfully, what you do get with this manual is this. This is really cool, I'll just show you this. So, this is a complete schematic with all the waveforms of the various test points. Um, I mean, again, it's a little bit of a nightmare to use. Um, you see there's a big gap up the, up the middle of it as well, which is quite cool. Although the waveform is not dissected by that, but it's just the way it's been done. Um, it's all very sort of, um, R&D. It's just very R&D. And... Yeah, I do 
video, but I'm quite a fan of that. Maybe taking this off. Just taking the, the top loading system off and then micro switches. Um, taking this off to then work out what does what. And I think that's going to be my next course of action. Oh. Take the top cover off by sliding it forward. It just literally slides forward and off it comes. That's really easy. That's great. Um, it's almost like it was designed I suppose that would help, uh, not really. I was going to say it would help with getting a cassette out if it got stuck, but it actually doesn't. So, it's moving. Uh, oh, it's going to have to go back. So there we are. Top of the deck. Um, actually, really good to see this, and see that there's belt still. Oh, that belt is still good. That's only the counter belt. Um, lots of gears. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's quite a bit of dust and tape residue and. We'll clean all that off. Um, probably want to put a tiny bit of lubrication on some of these as well. Um, G sensor. Obviously no heater. Solenoid there. Um, which I'm guessing is auto stop. So that would basically put it in stop when it's uh, when it reaches the end of the cassette. Like VHS, it actually uses optical. So it's a pick up here, and a pick up here. But unlike VHS, the actual light emitting um, post is here, which is quite interesting. Uh, what is it? It must be a lamp. No, it's an LED. It's actually using an LED. That is so cool. 1981. This looks just really weird because it's at such a strange angle. But I suppose, I mean, it will be at that strange angle because of the, uh, the strange angle that the mechanism is loading at. Um, okay, so you can see the pulley under there. Um, so we've got right, so we've got um, drive. So this will be for fast forward rewind um, which will move so uh, to rewind you see it pulls the gear in here um, oh, where are we stop um, let's try and work out where the buttons are um, then we've got four fast forward so that's using that gear there and then play. So play is using this one here. And you can see that that gear is moving in sympathy. So that is all done here, which is pretty much what I was thinking, to be honest. Um, now it looks like this is where the belt needs to go on to, probably. And we can see it is. Because there's the belt. <laughs> I noticed that before. It's pretty, uh, pretty good fun. And I think the pulley underneath there is is not used. Um, so this is an intermediate pulley. This doesn't do anything. See here, it's just literally just pressed on, 
Right, you can see there's been a belt there. So I think that pulley is just literally for routing the belt from here. Um, so it will go here, across here, round here, over here and back. So this needs to come off so I can get the belt on. And I then need to find a belt. That's going to be fun. That's quite a long belt. I'm guessing it's probably not much thicker than that. I will replace this belt as well because it has got some um, issues. I can't really see them now. It, it had like flakes of rubber on it. So it's obviously going bad. But uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so one thing I think I said that isn't actually quite right is the end sensors of the cassettes. So it is optical, but you can see there's um, a LED emitter emitting light and then a sensor there for each side. Um, I think I said it was only on the one side, it isn't. It's for supply and uh, take up sides. So yeah, really quite cool how that's done. And obviously LEDs uh, back in the early 80s were not very efficient. So I'm guessing that's why they decided to do it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, the other slight concern I have is this bit that's floating about here, where that actually does locate. Um, I think it actually goes in that little gap, um, just to the right of the spring there. Um, but I could be wrong. Well, um, no doubt we'll find out. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look at these uh, these belts. Okay, so uh, time to first of all clean up the mess of the belts. When I'm wearing some gloves, something I don't do very often. Probably should do more. And I'm just wondering if I can get away with undoing just one screw. Maybe not. <sighs> wow, that is tight. Well, I can work with that. Um, it's not ideal, but that other screw is really, really tight and I don't want to take the head off that if I can help it. So that's good. So the next thing, I'll take the circlip off. Maybe. And then, how does this come off? It's one of, this is one of these situations where if I didn't have the manual, I'd be thinking, oh, I really would like the manual. But having the manual and knowing that it's terrible is sort of slightly... Oh, <laughs> there we go. I managed to do it without damping the spring. It's sort of a bit weird. Um, this... I can't see how it's being held. So that's out there, that's out there. So this should just lift off. Which it has done. Um, yeah, I think it's just because of the way there's sort of multiple bits of metal and trying to get past where the circ clip is, it was just sort of falling into that groove. So, but that's fine. We got away with it. I mean, it is giving me an idea. The belts are actually really very fine. And that's that's useful to know. Um, because I have got one of those, they're not the best, those Chinese multiple belt kits that you can buy. Um, they're usually really badly cut. But, because, you can see... They're the same thickness as these, these belts. So that's, that's worth knowing. There's actually, oh, obviously quite a long belt.
and could argue I'm fiddling about with this more than maybe I need to. But uh, the way I look at it is, unless I've got to remove the better. It's a long old belt. does make me think that it is a single belt that does an awful lot. So I have managed to find belts um, and that, that, that does make sense. Um, that, that belt does make sense of it because it's missing that gap and it's not too tight, which is good. So this is one of the Chinese Type um, multiple belt size kits that you can buy. They're really cheap. Um, as is this one. As is this. Uh, no, that one is actually out of a um, uh, old belt kit um, that I have spare. Uh, it's a counter bells, I think. Um, this belt, um, I did change it in the end. Um, it's a bit wonky. You can see it's sort of a little bit unhappy. Um, it actually looks worse on camera. It's it's much better than that. Um, sort of looks as if it's sort of thin in places and twi almost twisted, but it isn't. Um, it's just how it's been in the packet. Um, it's been in the packet probably about 20, easily 20 years. Um, but I thought, well, we'll give it a go. Um, so it, it, hopefully it'll be okay, but I, I do suspect we'll get all sorts of warbling when we actually play back a cassette, <laughs> but at least I know it works. Now, the other belt that I took off here, you see I'm covered in black, um, that belt is actually, um, okay but it's really badly contaminated that's interesting it's actually in the belt um it's quite badly contaminated i did try and clean it but honestly it's just it's nearly had it to be fair um the belt itself probably is fine but um with that contamination, it's just not worth the effort. So, uh, belts are took off. I mean, they're okay, but you can see they're deformed. Um, so they, they, they are not gonna last any time at all. Uh, this belt is actually a little bit thicker than the original belt, but I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna put this assembly back in, um, bearing in mind that the one Post goes this side, the other post goes this side, and uh, yeah, it's probably going to be a bit of a struggle to get back on. So let's let's do that next. So um, I don't want to put the spring on first. Usually, I like to put the spring on first. Um, so this spring here that goes on to this here, but I think. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to just drop this down. Spring on. And. Oh, there we go. That. That actually went really well, he says, famous last words. Um, so, uh, oh, I can see where I've gone wrong, actually. Um, so, the capstan belt, that actually needs to go on top of yeah and 
like so. I don't know where you saw any of that, <laughs> but I'm going to hope you did. Um, it is quite complex. Um, let's say it's quite complex. It's For what this deck is trying to achieve, in the time it's trying, trying to achieve it, it's actually amazing how simple it is. Um, so, yeah, that's actually running fine. <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. Um, as long as I've got these all right, and I think I have, we should be fine. So we'll put the circuit back on. I managed to do that with my thumbnail. See, there's a reason you have decent nails. <laughs> um, and there we go. So, um, what did I do with that little screw? There it is. And I actually found that the, the best bit to use to get this out was actually a flat blade. None of the Philips style cross type. Um, bits fitted snugly and I did not want to strip ahead um, like I say I didn't remove this one because I just couldn't get anything to actually fit properly in there and I've got about half a dozen different styles of good quality bits so yeah there we go um, I think we are good to go I mean <laughs> that really bothers me wobbling about like it is but it's better than what was on there and uh obviously yeah <laughs> so um yeah let's get the deck back together and let's crack up okay so i'm gonna put this back together now um i have actually started to put this back on uh which is pretty straightforward to be honest just put all the screws back this bit here it actually goes through the chassis oh there's the chassis there so uh can't see it does anything really um maybe it locks one of these possibly when there's a cassette in there i don't know um i mean there is this one as well which is like the cassette in so, yeah, so I might also consider putting in the, the plastic um, resets button as well, uh, which I think glues on there. So maybe we'll do that as well. So, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so hit one slight issue. I was just testing the deck with it back um, resting on the PCB. And I could press stop, everything worked. I could press stop, but I couldn't press eject. And you can see it just lifts up, pushes up the, the lid. Um, but it was because this was locking, locking it. So you can see where it locks it there. And basically, in with everything else, when <laughs> you put this back together, you've got to get this bit here. So you've got to push these out of the way to drop it down. But then you've got to get this assembly here to line up with that um which is easier said than done but i should be able to do it uh, well i will be able to do it but it's just just making sure that's in really so um yeah i'm not going to film doing that because there's absolutely nothing to see because obviously it's all down um but uh yeah i shall do that next okay so i've put it pretty much back together but um I don't see any reason why this can't be run completely out of the case. I've put in the, the four um, hexagonal uh, screws with the flat heads 
on the bottom. So these things here. Um, and I've made sure that everything's free. I can eject it. Um, I've put a bit of rubber renew on that, the idler. I'm just a bit concerned that that idler, um, because it's just take up when it's um, unlacing, that could cause problems. Um, I'm sort of very intrigued by the whole thing. So um, I'm going to power this up. It's going to go straight in and um, so that's on. Okay. Well, fast forward isn't really working very well. The heads are rotating, that's a good start. Oh, that started working. Rewind is very good. So it must be... Yeah, it's trying to. Must be using the idler. That's not sounding very good. Uh, not quite what's going on there. I mean, that's driving really well. Um, I am pressing... Oh, that's fast forward, okay. So that is play. And... I don't quite what's going on there. Because things should be moving. It's trying to do something. Oh, it's like it's trying to load, but it can't. Like it's jammed. Okay, so I've taken the um, back sort of top loading uh, mechanism off again, and I've actually disconnected the the sensor, cut off the um, cable toy, uh, so which gives me plenty of space now. But one thing that concerns me, I've just found this. <laughs> And um, where on earth that goes, I don't know. There's also a pink wire here, which also doesn't seem to go anywhere. I do wonder if this is maybe something to do with the array's head, but the array's head seems to have red, a red wire, and it does have like an old oh, a sound dub sort of button on the side. So, oh, I don't know. That's a bit concerning, and again, the manual's not brilliant, but uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's just nice if we can get it actually working. So pressing play, what's not happening is this arm isn't moving, and this does, I mean, you can see the size of the spring. Um, it needs a fair bit of pressure to move that, and I can't see what actually does put that pressure on. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna power it back up. Um, I'm gonna have to press, press the button. Yeah, so you can see the torque isn't that great on that reel. 
it's actually slipping on the plastic there, so I might have to do something about that. But it's just... Why won't it release? And it's it's sort of trying to. Um, but even if I do, even if I do that, it's not it's not loading. It's not lacing at all. That'll do. So that means we've got free hands now to try and work out what's happening. So I've also got the one belt light. Ah, so that's the sensor that's causing that, which I think I can unplug. So, the other sensor's here. Okay, so I've sort of worked it out. Um, what's basically happened, I thought this assembly was weird, especially it was pressed up against the switch, but it didn't seem to move, and it, it was absolutely solid. And that's what's wrong with it. It is absolutely solid. Um, so I've actually used some WD-40 silicon lubricant, not <laughs> WD-40, um, just put a bit there. Um, I've used silicon because it's actually sandwiched between two bits of plastic and to really convince myself that this is supposed to move you can actually see the gears and um, the, the, the sort of rack and if you look here just about make out the driving gear um, and then there's a um, a wheel there that sort of pulls, uh, helps keep the, the tension there and indeed goes to that switch there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work this a bit now, uh, just gently. I don't want to crack the gears. I know I do have that cracked gear at the top, but it doesn't seem to slip. Um, but I'm still very tempted to take it off and... Uh, and maybe do something with it, but yeah, um, I shall crack on and uh, we'll take it from there. So that's it fully laced, you can see the pinch roller there, um, capstan is here, under this cabling, um, and this is all hunky-dory and laced up, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, you can see somebody's tried to get this working before and tried all sorts of methods with screwdrivers or whatever. Um, and indeed, I think I did uh, just try and wedge a screwdriver in there. So I've added to the, the trauma. But uh, yeah, that's that's it laced. Um, it does seem to be improving with um, use quite quickly, which is good. I've maybe put a little bit too much silicon grease but it's it's all away from the critical components of the belt so i'm fairly happy i'm okay um so i'm going to give it a little bit of a clean up now where i've um well i have been spraying to get rid of the excess um all the rollers are done um and on this side as well and uh yeah still really concerned where that wire went but uh no doubt we'll find that out in due course Let's crack on. Okay, so I've got it back together pretty well. I'm fairly confident it's okay. I have put some glue on that gear, um, but I haven't stripped it down. Um, so we'll see. Um, yeah, mixed feelings about this, but let's give it a go. So powering on and press down the switch. So fast forward, it actually seems better. Rewind, play. It still sounds horrible. Yeah, it's still not really able to. Uh, Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Terrible. And we're playing. I will say the um, take up seems to be better as well. convinced this is quite working right. Um, sure, that should be trying to... Oh yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear it trying to unlace. Oh my gosh, I don't want to bend anything. Hmm. I think I need to put the camera down and, uh, yeah, just try and unlace this. <laughs> well, <laughs> <clears throat> I managed to get it to load. It, it's doing everything it should do, except it's still incredibly tight. Um, on the loading, and the more I try and use it now, the worse it's getting. I mean, it's actually getting really, really bad. Um, I mean, I have to put a lot of force, especially to unlace it, um, and um, I'm basically having to put a screwdriver in the, the hole. This is um, an alignment hole, incidentally, that so goes through the parked home position. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this video here now. Um, we've come a long way uh, insofar as we've got the deck um, working to an extent. Um, but obviously we've, we've got some sort of issue um, with that loading with this arm here, basically. And I think in the next video, I'm going to be stripping this down taking it apart and just seeing what's happened. Um, what I'm noticing is I can see some cracks in the plastic um, between this assembly and the bottom of the head drum. And that's going to be a fun one to fix. It's it's not, not impossible, um, but it it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why do I let myself in for these things? Because it's fun. So, <laughs> with that, uh, please like and subscribe um, and follow as well, because uh, um, it might be a little while before I'm back on this deck uh, looking at it. Uh, we've got an HF 950 to come, um, second part actually, um, where we get it sort of running properly. Um, we've got the HF 100 to come as well, um, and we've got a really lovely... Um, VHS. I say it's really lovely. It's um, it's a model that I I've probably done hundreds of in the past and have no recollection now of <laughs> how they work. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, so yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? So uh, with that, thank you very much for watching. And um, yeah, click that notification bell uh, so you know when I'm going to start messing about this thing again. And uh, see you in another video. Bye for now.